Hello everyone. Today we are going to be working on a beautiful set and I've named this set Tamara which means lotus. I start off with a slab of uh, 0.6 cm and I smoothen this using my fettling knife. Using an oil lined cookie cutter, I cut out the shape. So we're looking at a semicircular shape. Um, we'll arrive at that shape after I trim this off using my fettling knife. And there you go. Let's begin designing this. I draw a couple of parallel lines and draw a zigzag pattern. I am using my fettling knife for this. Even if you don't have a fettling knife, you can always just use a basic uh, regular uh, knife and try this out. This is a pretty easy pendant. Um, I'm not using too many uh, tools to create this design. I am going to be using uh, a small mold, uh, a silicone mold. I'll leave that link in the description uh, box below. I'm using parts of a pen for this. Now for the silicone mold, like I said, the set is called as Tamara, which means lotus. So typically if it's a larger silicone mold, um, I would only add the clay gradually into the mold uh, to form the shape. But this being a small one, I just dunk the entire clay uh, together and just press it. So this gives me a pretty nice impression um, and that's you know, that's what we are looking for. I trim off the edges. In fact, I trim it off even more. And that's where uh, the pendant is going to be placed and using my scratcher tool, just preparing the surface. So uh, what I'm doing right now is creating, uh, well, instant slip, if you can call it <laughs> that way. So I'm just adding water at the tip of the scratcher tool and um, scratching it so that um, you know there's slip that's created and I'm able to attach the uh, lotus onto the pendant. I repeat the same thing uh, here as well and there you go you see that there's already slip that's being created and that's good enough to basically you know attach itself. I also uh, to make sure that it is sealed well i uh, use a wooden tool a modeling tool a sculpting tool whatever you want to call it and make sure it's all sealed in really well rather it's attached well this is a silicone tip brush this helps with getting a smooth uh, finish redoing some of the lines I do this using my uh, using a ballpoint pen refill a couple of gungru beads and then I attach uh, a pair of gauge 24 nichrome wire U pin hooks And the pendant is ready. Let's move on to the earrings now. The size of the slab, rather the thickness of the slab is 0 0.3 centimeters approximately. We get this also into a semicircular shape. Now, uh, you could always just work with one circle, just cut it halfway. But uh, typically, what happens to me is I never cut it halfway. Uh, one is always bigger than the other for me somehow, and <laughs> I 
so i just uh, you know i just make two and i um, cut it in this manner it just works better and i also get an equal size so yep we begin designing now again my fettling knife draw a couple of parallel lines and then uh, this is exact design so i'm just repeating some of the designs that um, that i did on the pendant uh, minus the lotus Attach a few gungru beads. A gauge twenty six nichrome wire, and the earrings are also ready. We let this set dry, and once it's dried, it's fired in an electric kiln. and once it's fired we can begin painting so if you see the set is fired beautifully the lotus is intact it's not come off or anything i've laid out the paints as well i'm using acrylic black antique gold olive green magenta and a dark green so uh, the reason why i've taken two greens over here is because uh, i'm going to be mixing them i'm going to be mixing the light olive green and the hunter green um more of the light olive green and less of the hunter green the brushes are just going to be 6 and 1 one, uh, one being my liner brush so let's begin with the antique gold this pendant is going to have an antique gold base i have actually mixed a small hint of black with gold we begin by applying a nice even coat of gold paint all over now that it's all painted i mixed a little bit of the olive green and rather a larger quantity of the olive green less of the hunter green and a little bit of gold uh, and prepared the green in that manner so we begin by applying the light magenta shade which is actually a beautiful shade and fits perfectly um, you know well uh, in this in this set so i have not done anything to the magenta it's straight out of the tube just diluted with a little bit of water and i'm applying it using my liner brush and there you go it's a lovely green um in fact when you mix a small hint of gold with this particular green especially the darker version of green it almost reminds me of a very um you know a silk sari type green the dark green sari especially and uh, you know because it gives that it gives that little bit of a sheen the difference in the lighting is uh, because i was uh, you know it, it the sun had already set it was getting dark and i was using a white light in the background that's why you see a difference in the color immediately green especially this kind of a green dark greens um, also happen to be uh, one of my favorite colors i have i have actually quite a few favorite colors but greens green i just i just like this green and there's something very traditional about uh, you know this combination as well so it will look really nice in a sari so now that the painting is done it's time to varnish this is the product i use i have a little bit in the con container over there and using a soft bristle brush 
applying a nice even coat all over the pendant. In fact, this is a process which does take time, especially when it comes to the gungru beads. My varnishing kind of went late into the night. <laughs> so once the varnish has uh, dried, I am uh, assembling this uh, using this particular cord. In my previous video as well, you must have seen me use uh, this kind of a blue, uh, rather this kind of a cord in a shade of blue. So I'm using this particular cord again. Check the description please for the link. I'm using jump rings and earring hooks. Very basic assembling, very easy. Uh, these are really cute earring hooks. I uh, really like these and my set of pliers. Let's begin by assembling the earrings. There you go, the earring hooks are in. Pretty, isn't it? <laughs> so with regard to the um, pendant, we open the jump rings up, put it through the cord and put it through the pendant. And with the help of uh, pliers, we close it, we close the jump rings. Please be careful while doing this, don't drop the pendant or scratch the pendant. It does happen, but please make, please be extra careful while doing this part. We repeat that on the other side as well. And there, this beautiful set is ready. So I've kept this on my, I've in fact placed it uh, on my Kerala Kasavasari. I think I, the combination is just so beautiful. So I really hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Consider hitting the like and the subscribe button. Uh, let me know what you think of the video in the comments. Thanks for watching.